Hey everybody, this is Perch. We've learned that uh, there's a new special uh, coming out. When I say special, it's a one shot. It's on sale in February and it's around uh, Eternals, the Undying. So the, uh, the Eternals had a comic, it got delayed pretty significantly and then the, uh, the, the movie got delayed. So the comic got delayed and then the comic was like, F it, and it just went out anyway. Um, and then the movie just came out and the movie is, is it's one of those things where I think depending on whether you're pro MCU or anti MCU, you have some good arguments you could make either direction for why the movie is succeeding or failing. Uh, right now, if you're hard in one of those camps, you're looking at the screen like, or, you know, whatever you're listening to this on going, what, what? There's no question about it, but, but there, you know, we, what, what do we have? Well, we've got a pandemic movie, movie sales are down. We know that they are. Um, the Eternals is underperforming certainly to other MCU films. It's performing higher than I thought it would against uh, Shang-Chi. The reviews from critics were terrible, let alone the review bombing or whatever else was going on with the fans. But the actual critic reviews were low. The buzz going into this film was pretty mixed. I mean, a big, a big bag of stuff. And the movie has made some money. So is it a success? Is it not a success? Um, again, it, it really depends on... You know, it's not going to it's not going to be one of Marvel's uh, biggest hits. But on the other hand, it um, it's probably stronger than they were expecting, given all those cases that I put above. I think it's what, 70, a little over 70 million opening weekend. Eh, it's not it's not great, but we're not understanding what movies are at right now. And unless you have shares in Disney, maybe you don't care. I, 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 that's a whole other video, whole other topic, but, but why should you care? I don't find myself emotionally invested in whether the Marvel movies are making money or not. I, I do have some Disney shares actually, but I don't, I don't, not a lot of them. And I don't, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't work me up either way. Um, so, you know, in normal times, this would be a disappointment, but given that, uh, you know, all the other kind of things, uh, going on, it's, it's not doing well. Um, it's it's falling just shy of Shang Chi. I was predicting it was going to fall a lot, shy. but sorry, I've, I've gone off track. This <laughs> it's not what this video is about. Regardless, there's been this comic, right? And Kieran Gillen uh, was put on this comic after he kind of I, I don't want to say famously walked away from Marvel, but he he was on X Men. He did his run there. He did some things in the Star Wars universe, and there was kind of this almost I'm leaving now. And he did the Wick and the Divine, which was one of Image's bigger successes. Uh, it was. Not uh, it wasn't saga big, but it felt like it was getting there. It actually felt like it maybe wrapped up a little bit too quickly in the sense that there's probably more money in there with uh, with that. But um, he's been on this comic and they've been trying to kind of get the Eternals to be a thing again. Uh, the Eternals is one of those properties that nobody's terribly cared about for quite a while. And then Neil Gaiman did some stuff. And but again, it didn't really move the needle. And some of those characters showed up in the Avengers and other places. But um, Karen Gillen is trying to kind of reestablish what it is. Asad Ribic uh, has been incredible on that. But this one shot by Ryan Bodenheim, covered by Adriana, Sor uh, Adriana Sorrento. Um, I, you know what? I'm tired of messing up the names. Anyway, uh, it turtles the undying special. It's promising to introduce Thanos's omni genocidal great uncle. So wait a minute. What's that? It, the pitch is basically that if you thought Thanos was bad, his great uncle is even worse. He's an even more horrific great uncle and the worst leader that the Eternals has ever seen. Um, Thanos is uh, is in, in technically a deviant per the uh, Marvel Universe, Marvel comic book universe. No, not that doesn't mean he's, you know, into horseplay. It means he's, you know, somebody else is going on. Uh, but he's um, Thanos is scheduled to become the leader of the Eternals in Gillen's run. OK, now I've put a lot of stuff uh, towards you there. But the the idea that Thanos, whose Marvel has built up as being a giant big bad of a villain, Donnie Cates is teasing at some point that Thanos is going to get Thor's hammer, put the Infinity Gems on it, and kill him. Um, there, there's been a lot of, uh, of of promotion of Thanos as a big big villain for Marvel. And uh, but you know when you have an ultimate evil, then and then that evil gets defeated there's this desire to go back to no, there's an even bigger evil. And that's what we have here with uh, the omnicidal, or no, sorry, omnigenocidal great uncle, Uranos. Uranos. It's Uranos the Undying.
more horrific than him. So here's my question for you. And, and it took a long time to get here, and I apologize for that. But why do comics do this? In other words, like it's like, well, if you thought you knew the big villain, no, there's an even bigger villain behind it. This isn't a new phenomenon. This isn't something that just happened in the last five years. Uh, if you go, go backward in time, you see that comics consistently rolls out this trope. Whether it's, uh, you know, we, we had it with absolute carnage. It's this big event. You're not prepared for it, said Donny Cates. It's going to melt your mind, etc. But the end of absolute carnage basically teed up that there is even worse thing. Null. And Null is is coming. And uh, that's going to be king in black. And it's going to be super, super evil. And it's the worst thing. And Null is, if you thought uh, these other people are bad, I mean, Null is super bad. He's killed so many people. He's just laid waste to planets and galaxies and everything else. And then, uh, you know, in five issues, he's defeated in King and Black. And we're off trying to find the new, most, more genocide. I mean, we, we've come to the point where we have a genocidal character in Thanos, but his uncle, the omni-genocidal great uncle, and then soon we'll have the hyper-time omnicidal, genocidal, multiversal, linear-verse great uncle, horrific, awful time. I mean, at some point... Um, it strikes me that it, the other thing is I was having this conversation with somebody about, about Noel. Um, Donny Cates built up Noel as being like the scariest dude in the whole universe. He's the, the black force that is going to wipe out everything. And it's, it's the death of it's, this is one scary, terrible, awful, uh, person, but you know, what did he, he actually accomplish? Um, we are told kind of off panel that he's doing these super evil things. We got a couple comics in there where it showed him like putting black goo on stuff and then they get evil, creepy smiles and, and that's bad. But in general, like, did anyone really feel like that was a threat? This is kind of a comic uh, problem that comics have in general right now is as they've ramped up the threat to be, this is even a worse threat than the worst threat from the worst threat of before. It's become, I, I, I don't know, like none of this stuff seems very serious. Certainly not. I mean, none of, none of these threats feel very threatening. And that has become the, the problem here. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that I really have a strong feeling toward any of this stuff. And at some point, it becomes this arms race of who is the most threatening, for sure threatening this time, the most threatening in the world, and, but nothing is threatening. And when you skip from kind of big threat to big threat, and I, I'm not just dumping on this Eternals comic, because, but when I read the synopsis, or this is a quote from Gillen, for a second, try and have sympathy with Thanos. Gillen says in a statement about the special, he was born on Titan to a family which he loathes and has nothing in common with. In our run, he arrives on Earth, meets the rest of his extended family, and discovers it's the same thing all over again. How depressing for Thanos. And then he discovers Uranus, the undying, that, that name's going to kill me, omnigenocidal great uncle, the rotting monstrous tree which Thanos' apple barely fell from, proof that perhaps this capacity of horror does skip a generation. So it's a happy ending for Thanos, really. Unhappy for everyone else, admittedly, but you can't have everything. This is a story about some of the darkest periods in the Eternal Saga as two of the worst people in the Marvel Universe get to know each other. Less meat cute, more meat execute. I mean, okay, but does this get you to buy a comic? I, it, it's sad because I think Gillen is is great at mythology building. I think he does really cool stuff. I do like this idea of like, okay, we're going to delve more into Thanos, but we've kind of gone into Thanos' backstory a lot over the last five years. And what what more do we need to do? We need to make him more complex. I mean, I'm thinking about the charming times back uh, 30 years ago when Thanos was uh, mainly went to get with death because death had some good curves to her. And so he's like, well, in order to impress my lady, I can kill off half of the universe and that would make death super happy. Like that was that was his big plan. That was that was it. And, and he was a scary dude back then. The Infinity Gauntlet, I mean, DC felt like a pretty massive threat. You didn't have great uncles. You didn't have parentage. You didn't have this secret multi-dimensional other rift where evil has always won somehow. I mean, it just, 
I think I feel the same thing is true when you get to like the death metal or metal kind of stuff. It's like, hey, you know, the Joker is really evil. But what if we combine the Joker with Batman in a universe in the dark multiverse? It's the upside down version where evil actually wins more often and bad things happen. And so it's an even bigger threat. And he wears a scary helmet. It's like I think you guys are missing the point on what makes a threat at some point over what makes something actually scary and and dark and threatening. You just, as a comic reader, I don't know, is is anybody really kind of getting off on this stuff? I I tend to doubt it. But again, maybe I have it wrong. Are you looking forward to meeting Thanos' great uncle, the omnigenocidal Uranus? Uranus. The Undying. Are you excited to to meet this? Is this going to help? Does Thanos become more evil, more threatening out of this? And, And by the way, in fairness, he might. I'm, I'm speculating a comic I haven't read yet. It's always dangerous. Maybe Thanos comes out the other side of this and it's provided some more dimension, a more deeply threatening character. That, that And I, I'm all for that. I definitely believe we need better villains, for sure. I just, uh, why this need to kind of constantly top things? And does this help make Eternals more digestible to people who may be coming into it from the from the movies? And and. I know and people like to tell me it's like nobody who's going to the movies going to the comic store. But if somebody's run a comic store and had people come into the comic store having watched the movies wanting more, that's bullshit. People people absolutely go from the movies to the comics and want to read more of the comics. Uh, is are, is this going to help? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Is Josh Brolin still under contract somewhere with uh, with Disney? I, I, Anyway, anyway, let me know if you're if this all seemed threatening to you. I feel like uh, I feel tired just doing this video. I just got more and more beat. (laughs) Sorry about that, folks. Thanks for listening.